Rose for leading the music <laughs> along with Doreen. Really appreciate that. Uh, by way of announcements, um, first of all, a uh, happy belated birthday to Ron Mahabir, whose birthday was on Friday. Ron is still in the hospital. Uh, he's just had so many physical setbacks, but he's hoping that he can come home in a few days, so we're hoping that that will, that will work out. Also, for those of you who know Isabel Sicucci, uh, she's known by different surnames. Uh, we've known her more or less by Isabel Sicucci, but her maiden name is Murray, and she married Jim O'Connor, so she's got different last names. But a few weeks ago, Jim, oh, Jim called me a few days ago, said that Isabel a few weeks ago fell, um, trying to get out of bed, over a railing, and she <laughs> fell, and you know that's Isabel, eh? <laughs> uh, she fell and broke her hip. Um, a few days ago, apparently she was able to walk again, but a few days ago she thought she was going to sit on a chair, and she fell and broke the other hip. So she's now in bed, and she's not doing very well. So I'm sure she'd really appreciate your prayers. Also, uh, getting back to birthdays, uh, happy birthday to Sophie Sussford and Reverend Roseberry next Saturday. So hope that they're all having good days. And then, um, normally on Mother's Day, we have the start of our fundraising drive for the Crisis Pregnancy Center. There are now two crisis pregnancy centers in Shanagay. And the one that you see with the bottles and the poster there is, is being run by Linda and Teddy Hoare. Uh, they're now over on Principal Street at 33 Principal, and they call themselves Connections. So if you'd like to support their crisis pregnancy center, uh, please take a bottle, and I've got a, a paper for you to sign up that you, you've taken a bottle. And then, also starting today, but I don't have the information that I'd like to have for the station, the crisis pregnancy center that is at station seven, their, their um, fundraising is a little bit different and I'm hoping that I can send, with Senator's help, to send out information this week that you'll have more information on that. So, let us now prepare to worship. Today we're giving thanks to God for the gift of mothers and the mother-like nurture that many people show to others in their lives. Isaiah wrote that God is like a mother to us, comforting and caring as in his arms. 
that God would never forget us, that he knows each of us like a mother knows her own children. And today, may we thank God for his tender care and let us join in worship and praise of our great God who loves us. And let us hum and sing, joyful, joyful, we adore thee. together in prayer. Let us pray. Dear God, we gather this day to thank you for our homes and families, for moms everywhere, for our food and clothing, and for all the happiness that parents and children and we as a church family can share. We ask that your love may surround us, your care protect us, and that we may know your peace at all times. We pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Well, it's so great to have uh, Jason and Zoe with us again today. You guys know what day it is today? All right. Did you give your mom a hug today? No, I had a sleepover at Grandma's. You had a sleepover at Grandma's. Did you give Grandma a hug today? Yeah, because she's a, she's a mom too, eh? So she deserves a hug. You know, I was thinking about what moms different different moms do and. What moms do of different things, and, and you know, moms wear different hats, right? Sometimes they wear hats that they play, so they're 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 they they play hats as they play, or maybe sometimes they wear nurse they wear nurses hats. You don't actually see them, but they put bandages on them. Grandmoms do too, and they put bandages on you. Sometimes they may look like they're wearing a policeman's hat because they say. Don't you cross that road now, because you could get hurt. So you just stay right there until it's safe to cross. Or sometimes they wear a cook's hat, 
because they cook good meals. So they wear different hats, and they're different, different, special to us. I brought along another hat this morning. I'm not going to put it on, but it was my mom's hat. She was the organist at our little country church, and um, she loved hats. And she would wear this hat sometimes. Moms also, and grandmoms, take their kitties to church. And they tell people about God's love for them. And that's one of the things I love about my mom. She told us about Jesus loving us and caring for us. And we knew that there was somebody special. And everything else, when we get afraid or everything like that, God was there for us. She's a special lady. So people, mothers and grandmothers wear different hats. And we can thank God for the different things that moms and grandmoms and stepmoms and moms that are like us do for us, okay? We're going to sing. Sing a happy hallelujah. Sing a happy hallelujah. Who remembered their eggs today? Uh, in the car. Well, that's not a good place. Just so happy to have a few more. My hands are satisfied. Thank you. Thank
scripture passage with you this morning, and it's from Paul's second letter to Timothy. Timothy was almost like an adopted son to Paul. And Paul wrote these loving words to him. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, according to the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus. To Timothy, my dear son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Jesus Christ our Lord. I thank God, whom I serve, as my forefathers did, with a clear conscience, as night and day I constantly remember you in my prayers. Recalling your tears, I long to see you, so that I may be filled with joy. I've been reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois, and in your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded now lives in you also. And for this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power, of love, and of self-discipline. Thanks be to God. We have a little film, to, a little skit to show you.
all know, today is that wonderful Sunday when we recognize mothers, whether there are biological, adoptive, stepmoms, or like a mom to us women. And in all fairness, I think also those special women should also include mothers-in-laws and grandmoms because they are also moms. It can be a great day with flowers, chocolates, cakes, breakfast in bed, and hugs, but it can also have its challenges. For some, it may be the first year alone with mom having passed away. It could be that mom is really ill and doesn't remember you. It could be that mom never was that Hallmark card kind of mom. Or it may be that with COVID restrictions, we can't get to be with our moms or our children. I often feel a little self-conscious on Mother's Day because as a female minister and a mom, to speak of a mother's virtues, I wonder if it looks like I'm tooting my own horn. And I guess that male clergy uh, could also run into the same problems on Father's Day. So maybe that's part of the challenges of the trade. But on Mother's Day then, I like to think of those women who exhibit and live qualities that we say are mother-like. Fortunately, I've not had to rack my brain to come up with examples. My five sisters and two living brothers and I had a real mom. Warm-hearted, tender, caring, funny, hard worker, and a woman of deep faith. And I likewise had a mother-in-law who welcomed me into her life with open arms and for whom from almost the very beginning it was easy to call her that special title of mom. In honor of her, I'm wearing a skirt that she made for me. I cannot from first-hand experience then ruefully call my mom the old lady or tell negative mother-in-law jokes. In addition, from working in different churches, including here, I've known wonderful women who are truly moms. In our day and age, success is often judged or measured by one's ability to make money, by what position you have in your place of work, or how well you are publicly known. Often a woman will be embarrassed when asked what she does with saying, oh, uh, well, I'm only a mom. I found an estimate that if moms were paid for what they do as moms, they would get around $78,000 a year. But wouldn't that make it a bit of a difference if we knew our moms were getting paid financially to be a mom? Rather, don't we appreciate that sense of caring that comes from the heart? We may recall that beautiful example of being a wife and mom in that well-known passage of Proverbs 31, where King Solomon talks about the wife of noble character, including her providing food for her family, reaching out to the poor, providing clothes for her family. King Solomon goes on and on. And the wonderful thing is that while her husband speaks so highly of her, her children agree. Her children arise and call her blessed. No old lady, old woman talk from them. She holds a place of honor in their household. And we see the same kind of appreciation spoken by St. Paul as he writes to Timothy, a young pastor, encouraging Timothy to go on. Paul acknowledges the great impact that Timothy's grandmom Lois and his mom Eunice had on Timothy. And at the point of embarrassing someone here today, when I was thinking of Timothy, a lovely grandmom with her two grandchildren came to mind. Sharon, you are like Timothy's grandmom Lois. And along with you and other grandmoms, gently playing a huge part in the lives of your grandchildren. You could be used by God to have an amazing positive impact on your little ones. And it goes down the line as we can see by Timothy's life. 
Someone has said, grandmas don't just say, oh, that's nice. They reel back and roll their eyes and throw up their hands and smile. You get your money's worth out of grandmas. Someone else said, grandmothers are the people who take delight in hearing babies breathing into the telephone. And also, grandmas never run out of hugs or cookies. And this is often passed down the line. Abraham Lincoln said, in regards, in, Abraham Lincoln said, all that I am or hope to be, I owe to my angel mom. And somebody by the name of James Barry said, the God to whom little boys say their prayers has a face very much like their mother's. I recently read about St. Augustine. He's a familiar name to many as a highly respected theologian and writer from the mid 300s to mid 400s. And he discovered that as a young person, he was a very uncouth person. The stories that can be told of how uncouth he was. But he had a Christian mom by the name of Monica who just would not pray, stop praying for her son through thick and thin. And eventually, Augustine came to follow the Lord, and he had tremendous impact on the world. Like that old gospel song, he could say, my mother's prayers have followed me. And that deep love comes from the heart of God. Often we hear about God the Father, which he is, but the scriptures also use a mother's attributes to describe God's heart. Can we not relate to God speaking to the people in Isaiah's time when he says, As one whom his mother comforts, so I will comfort you. And in another section of Isaiah, can a mother forget her nursing child? Can she feel no love for the child she has born? Can we not relate to the tenderness we sense in God speaking those words? I think it was Lila Parkinson who sent a video, maybe some of you else, others have received it. She sent out a video a few days ago of mother dogs and cats tenderly looking after their babies. And it seems like it's instinctual, even in animals, for a mother to care for her little ones. In our contemporary world, there's a lot of talk that there's no difference between men and women, which studies done show us a lot of fiction, of nonsense, of twaddle. There are many differences between men and women. God made both sexes for a reason, and he gave both men and women parenting roles. In many homes these days, and in past generations, for various reasons, there is only one parent, which makes their role even greater. Maybe one parent is missing through war or through illness, through abandonment. But this is where the extended family and the church community can come in to lend a hand to compensate for a missing parent. Someone has said there's an old saying that what our children need most from us are roots and wings. They need to know who they are, where they belong, who their people are, what their values are, where they will find life's meaning. And they need to be helped to fly, to go with the air that will carry them, to know their strengths and their limits, to have a vision of where they're headed. It is our task as a church to be a place where our children can find both of these things and both of them, roots and wings, are gifts from the family and the church. So says Samuel T. Lloyd III. But today, as we gather as a church family to recognize those special people whom God has entrusted with caring for those little ones that he loves so much, we gather. You may not feel important, who you, but you are. Thomas W. 
Fessenden expresses it well. You painted no Madonnas, Madonnas on chapel walls in Rome, but with a touch of diviner, you lived one in your home. You wrote no lofty poems that critics counted art, but with nobler vision, you lived them in your heart. You carved no shapeless marble to some high soul design, but with a finer sculpture, you shaped this soul of mine. You built no great cathedrals that centuries applaud, but with a grace exquisite, your life cathedral to God. Had I the gift of Raphael or Michelangelo, oh, what a rare Madonna my mother's life would show. Today, by whatever title you live those sentiments, happy Mother's Day.
let us pray. God of provision and unconditional love, on this day when we acknowledge the importance of motherhood among us, we first give thanks that you are a loving parent to us all. You have formed us in your image as your children and gathered us together as a brood under your wing. We celebrate your divine love reflected in human expressions of motherhood. We give you thanks for the mothers among us and beyond these walls and ask that you strengthen them in, your, in their daily tasks. Grant them wisdom in the lessons they teach, patience in the discipline they foster, persistence in their promotion of decency and compassion, both by word and example. And may they be given the honor and thanks they deserve, but often do not receive. We thank you for all motherly figures, grandmothers, aunts, sisters, wives, stepmothers, foster mothers, guardians, babysitters, teachers, health care providers, neighbors, friends, loved ones, and many others who practice self-sacrifice and embody compassion to all who are privileged to be in their influence. Grant them vigor to carry on their work and the satisfaction that the holy privilege of their task affords. We acknowledge to you, O God, that even amid our grateful celebration, Many may live this day with restless spirits, reluctant to name the difficulties of this day. For some, this day brings the sorrowful awareness of their own inability to conceive biological children. Draw your tender spirit near their, their feelings of self-betrayal, impotence, and grief, and remind them that those who struggle with infertility have always shared a special place in your heart. We pray for those who have suffered miscarriages, those fatigued by fertility treatments, those struggling through the process of adoption. May they remember that in your power and through your church, they can still leave a lasting legacy among themselves, beyond themselves. For some, this day is marked by loneliness and grief, and they spend this first Mother's Day as a widower, an orphan, or a parent who has lost a child. To those who today live in the wake of the death of a loved one, glance glimpses of the resurrection. Bring them to a steady restoration of their broken hearts and allow them to live into their future with hope. For some, this is a day that surfaces ongoing tensions that exist within our personal relationships and family dynamics. We ask for healing from the wounds of our past, a path of forgiveness for wrongs both experienced and committed, and the rebuilding of trust forged in honesty, authenticity, and love. And give, we give you thanks today for new moms and young moms whose children are in their most tender years, for moms of grown children who are transitioning into an empty nest and a new chapter of self-discovery, for moms and grandmoms of advanced years. There's this accumulative reminder that Though our lives are marked by transition and change, your nurture and affection for all your children remains the same. And therefore, remind us to live with a childlike faith, curious to every wondrous mystery, attentive to your every instruction, obedient to your every command, and willing to share with every one of your children. We give you thanks, O God, who is both parent to us all, and in whose name we pray. Amen.
by the love of your family and friends, by the beauty of the world, and by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the blessings of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be with you now and evermore. God bless you, everyone. Thank <laughs> you.